In this video I will talk about how the Fed is preparing for the squeeze. Hey, welcome to a MC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. I want to explain what they've just implemented to get the most money out of you during the squeeze. But before I touch on that, I want to talk about what's led the Fed to make these changes and what developments we've just seen. So I think part of what's led the Fed to make these changes is the fact that three separate banks are collapsing, are on the verge of collapse this very week. We've got C or Silvergate, we've got CS or Credit Suisse, and soon SPNY or Signature Bank of New York, Spence tweets saying, I generally think the Fed thought we hit a soft bottom, and then suddenly all the mess was found pushed under the bed. The Fed thought we were heading for this soft landing. There'd be no recession. All of these stocks would bounce back. Hedge funds would generate billions, if not trillions of dollars in profits, and no fund would ever be squeezed. But it seems that all of this mess and all of these bankruptcies have simply been swept to the side. And that actually, we're definitely due for a hard landing and a recession is coming. And Spence tweeted saying the dominoes are falling and the timing actually couldn't be better. So let's start from the top and talk about each of those three banks in order from Spencer's tweet. First up, we have Silvergate. So Silvergate Capital announced yesterday that it was winding down operations and is formally going bankrupt. As a result, the Silvergate stock is again down 36% in the start of the market trading this morning and was down as much as 50% in the pre-market hours. In literally the last week or two alone, Silvergate has fallen from $25 per share down to sub $3. And what makes this comically even better timed is the fact that investment firms Citadel Securities and BlackRock recently took major stakes in Silvergate, buying up 5.5%, and 7% respectively. So basically, Citadel just put in 5.5% of Silvergate, which is hundreds of millions, if not potentially billions of dollars into the bank that's now just disappeared. Citadel are taking on a massive loss, hundreds of millions of dollars each and every day that Silvergate continues to dwindle down, which obviously is good news for us, as it means that Citadel are even closer to that dreaded marching call. Now, next up on the list, we've got Credit Suisse. This morning, the Credit Suisse stock also plunged because their annual report was delayed after a late-night call from the SEC. Credit Suisse on Thursday announced that it would delay its publication of its 2022 annual report after a late call from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Wednesday night. It says the annual report was scheduled for release on Thursday morning. Back in February, Credit Suisse reported a massive 2022 full-year net loss of 7.3 billion Swiss francs or $7.8 billion. They also telegraphed another substantial full-year loss for this year. But for some reason, the SEC have had some complaints and changes that need to be made. Maybe Credit Suisse have actually lost more money than they're perpetrating. Maybe they need to adjust some of their financial figures. Or maybe there's some wording in there that the SEC wasn't happy about that needs changing. Regardless of that, the fact Credit Suisse actually had to delay its financial results and the fact the stock is dropping this morning is likely to cause even more customers to withdraw from Credit Suisse, which again is obviously going to lead to further losses and likely to a substantial full-year loss for 2023. Third bank on that list is SBNY, or Signature Bank of New York. This is actually a bank we haven't heard much of before, but seems to be in a very similar boat to Silvergate Capital. It says with the demise of Silvergate, SBNY is the only larger bank remaining with a functional on-ramp for institutional crypto investors. So effectively, SBNY is another bank very similar to Silvergate that could soon be falling down. As well as JC tweeted, he said if I was a sell-side analyst, he said, I'd be terrified to have a buy rating on the other publicly traded crime scene. So it seems Signature Bank is also being accused of committing fraud or committing crimes and potentially aiding and abetting overseas criminals. This again is likely going to end up with SBNY or Signature Bank potentially failing over the coming months very similarly to Silvergate. And this has all led to Larry McDonald, a guy that wrote a book on Lehman Brothers believing the stock market will crash in the next 60 days. Frank's Place tweeted saying the stock market will crash in the next 60 days. Warns Larry McDonald, founder of the Bear Traps Rapport and author of a best-selling book about the Lehman Brothers collapse. Now you may be saying, how is three failing and potentially collapsing banks going to lead to a stock market collapse? And I think it really links into this tweet from Spence where he said the Fed thought we were going to have a soft landing. But actually it seemed much more like a hard landing. 
As the Cobus letter tweeted, it now seems almost certain we're not going to have another 25 basis point hike at the next meeting. Actually, they're setting sights on a 50 basis point hike. He tweeted saying just in, odds of a 50 basis point rate hike this month hit a new high of 75%. And he said more shockingly, the odds of 250 basis point rate hikes are now 20% as well. So it seems instead of the Fed flipping dovish and beginning to cut interest rates, it seems they're not only going to continue hiking, but actually even ramp up the pace of those hikes. And he said this is by far the most hawkish shift in expectations we've seen so far. Obviously, the recent stock market rally was built on hopes of a Fed pivot towards a more dovish stance and potentially towards cutting interest. But now it seems that actually the Fed isn't going to get dovish at all and they're actually going to get even more hawkish and continue raising those rates. Therefore, it seems like over the next few weeks the stock market rally will unwind and we'll be back into that bear market territory and we will see a new stock market crash. If we're going to see that stock market crash, if we're going to see these hedge funds losing billions of dollars, potentially even trillions of dollars as well, that means we're going to see an AMC squeeze. These hedge funds are going to lose billions of trillions and end up being liquidated and end up going bankrupt. And obviously as a result of liquidation, these hedge funds will be forced to sell off their long positions and close out of their shorts. So it seems the Fed is disregarding chances of a soft landing and they're now setting their sights on a hard landing instead. And obviously with that comes the AMC squeeze. So how exactly is the Fed going to benefit? Well, as Watcher Guru retweeted they said President Biden has just called to double capital gains tax from 20% to 40%. Clearly the Fed and President Biden are suddenly expecting tons of people to have massive taxable capital gains and they've decided they need to up the tax rate. They're seemingly deciding there's going to be tons of people that have all of these assets that they've held for at least a year that are going to massively increase in price generating capital gains tax and need to be sold. And therefore, the best way for the Fed to benefit is to increase the tax rate from 20% to 40% to tax all of those chargeable gains. But actually, this is a really interesting time to be increasing these rates. Surely if there's going to be a giant stock market crash, that means that loads and loads of assets are going to be worth less. Therefore, there's no taxable gain. If the stock market crashes, the property market will likely also crash as well as for the car market. Therefore, all of these assets that people bought for an expensive price will suddenly become cheaper, generating zero gain. Unless all of a sudden there's a group of people that have assets that rise in price during a stock market crash. I wonder what assets will go up during a crash. So obviously, when these hedge funds end up being liquidated and it causes the IMC to squeeze all of us, retail investors are going to have tons of chargeable capital gains that we need to pay tax on. Top of that, Biden's new budget also includes a new minimum tax on wealthy individuals' unrealized capital gains. So they've even decided if retail investors don't sell their shares during the squeeze, they're still going to try and tax us on our unrealized capital gains. Either way, the Fed and President Biden are expecting a group of people to make tons of money during the market crash on assets they've held for at least a year, and should be taxed even more on it. While the thought of capital gains tax doubling from 20% to 40% isn't a great thing, to me it just shows the AMC squeeze is even more certainty, and that clearly the Fed are preparing to benefit from the AMC squeeze by increasing these tax rates. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.